Yeah, what? 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 Early morning church flow. What? 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 Early morning church flow. What time it is? What time it is? <laughs> yeah, I'ma tell God how good He been. Yeah, early morning church flow. Yeah, I'm with it, Team Jesus. What you scared for? Early, early morning praising. I'm just getting up. Never giving up my life. I've given up. But uh, after this earth, I apologize for all of the wickedness. Influence music, my teammates is lying like we play in Michigan. Yeah, caught in the swagger, I hopped in the booth, did and put in the work. Yeah, that was just Saturday night. My home is turned up for church. Boy, my home is married with church, and my home is still doing ministry. My home is in love with Jesus, my home is step on the enemy. Yeah, Satan got problems, you kidding me? No, he ain't messing with YT. Yeah, I feel like angels beside me, riding, posted like IT. On the third day, off on my sins in the first place. Yeah, give up that place, gonna be Thursday. If not, then hell is the worst case. Hey, I'm living the standard, living the standard, go off every Thursday. Yeah, Romans 10 and on my jersey. I praise to Jesus, he's worthy. Church flow, church flow. People say it lame, but it worked though. Nothing really pays like the church show. Spirit on stage, let it bang like Kirk go. Bang, the pain and the hurt go. Devil jumping hurdles, I am at the first go. Touchdown, I'm like, what now? It's yeah. dog covered by the blood, I'm a bloodhound. Yeah. I'm just a human and this flesh get at me naturally Actually, I know a man who took that stab in the back for me This ain't about the rapping, but it's the passion he had for me My life ain't about getting laid, cause, cause he laid on Calvary Church flow, early morning church flow, flow, flow yeah, early morning church flow. What time it is? What time it is? Y'all ready? I'ma tell God how good he been. I'ma tell God how good he been. I'ma tell God how good he been. Yeah, early morning church flow.
Good morning. What a mighty, mighty, awesome God we serve. He's great. Wherever you are, let's just welcome him into our presence. Lord God, you're welcome to move here. Holy Spirit, we exalt you. We welcome you into our space right now. If you need to repent of any sin, um, anything that would hinder you from worshiping God and receiving from him and communing with him right now, go ahead and just repent of that, asking him to forgive you so that we can come boldly before his throne. We can worship him with, with pure hearts. Hallelujah. Lord God, we exalt you. We bless your name. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness that endures to every generation, your word says. Be magnified, be glorified in this place, Lord God. We magnify you and we reverence your holy presence in Jesus' name. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever and ever and ever. So we're here to magnify you. We're here to glorify you. We lift your name on high, Lord God. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the praise. We're here to worship you. We're here to worship you. Oh, say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, people from every nation. People from every nation. And from generation. From generation to generation. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. worship you, Lord, for who you are. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord, for who you are. And you are good. And you are good. Say, yes, you are. 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 So good, so good, so good, so good. Say yes, you are, 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 yes, you are. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. We'll sing of your praises, Lord. You're good, endureth forever. People from every nation. Nation and tongue from generation to generation. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. your name you Lord all the, time, all the time all the time all the time you are good, you are good. people from every nation from, every nation and tongue, from generation from generation to generation we worship, we worship you Lord hallelujah oh we worship you Lord we worship you Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. 
draw near to you, Lord God, laying aside every weight, trusting and relying in you and you alone. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being our source. Thank you for your strength. Your strength is made perfect in our weakness, your word says. So we rely on you, Lord. We choose not to have any anxiety about anything. But we cast every care on you. And we'll make our requests known to you. As your word says, that the confidence that we have when approaching you is that you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we know that you will answer. So, Lord God, we take this time to just be still before you. We still our hearts and we still our minds. And we focus in on you. We open our heart to you. You move as you deem necessary in our lives. We surrender to you, Lord. And we thank you in advance for what you're doing in our lives, in our hearts. Thank you for what you're doing in this time. Thank you for moving. We draw near to you. Thank you, Lord God. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar, so I draw near to where you are. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship. I don't want to worship from afar, so I draw near to where you are. I draw near to where you are. Say, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Feasting at your table. And surrounded by your glory. Surrounded by your glory. It's in your presence, that's where we always want to be. I just want to be, I just want to be with you. Say, I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily. Dwelling daily in your presence. And I don't want to worship from afar. So draw me near. Draw me near to where you are. Say, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table sting at your table and surrounded by your glory and surrounded by your glory only in your presence Lord in your presence that's where we always want that's to be where we always want to be oh I just want to be I 
just want to be with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're together lovely you're all together worthy all together wonderful to me stay right there say here i am here i am to worship here i am here i am to bow we yield to you You're my God. You're all together, love. All together, worthy. You're all together, wonderful. So wonderful. So wonderful. Say, so so here I am. We're here before you, Lord. We bow our will for yours. You are my God. You're all together loving. All together worth. You're all together wonderful. So wonderful, so wonderful. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. None like you, Lord. High and lifted up, you are. Reigning with power, you won the victory. Almighty God, we reverence you. You're wonderful. So wonderful, wonderful. You're so wonderful to me. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness. Be magnified, Lord. Not just in our hearts in this moment, but from this day forward. Be magnified. Help us to magnify you. Help us to glorify you and represent you in a way that pleases you. We yield our hearts to you. Thank you for your word that's going forth. And we thank you, Father God, that we are transformed by the renewing and by hearing your word. So be magnified, be glorified, and we open our hearts to you. Thank you, Lord. God is an awesome God. He is so worthy of our praise and our worship. Listen, guys, right now, just take a deep breath. Just one more time for me. I want you guys to make sure that you do not carry the cares of this world. Whatever's going on in your life, nothing is too hard for God. Please understand that. And for those of you who have left praise and worship off of your time and, and, and just kind of getting busy with the bus busyness of life, let me tell you something, nothing can replace it. So right now, if you need to, go back and rewind and, and get that praise and worship in you. Take part in it. I don't care where, where you have to go, in your home, your car, outside, wherever it may be. Make sure that you're praising God with everything in you. He's looking and listening for your praise. He inhabits the praise of his people. Let me tell you something, guys. God did not design you, and I'm talking to you, God did not design you to handle loads of stress. That's why our bodies are breaking down now. High blood pressure, stroke, all disease comes from stress, not COVID-19. 
but the stress that you're taking on that God never intended for you to handle. Listen, he said, cast your cares on him, not place them, not hand them off. The scripture tells us to cast our cares on him. So I want to make sure that you guys are casting your cares. Why? Because God loves you. Listen, in our weakness, he is made strong. So never forget that. Never forget. Listen, let daddy be daddy. If he's God, let him be God. And stop taking God matters into your own hands. You do your part and you let God do his. Pray with me now, family. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this awesome day that you bless us with. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice, Father, to receive a word, Lord God, is going to be inspiring, uh, uh, innovative, Lord God, thoughts and ideas and everything that they need to accomplish your will and your desire. All those things will be imparted to them because they've listened attentively, Father. I pray that it falls on good ground and produces a great harvest. Father, let my words be as the oracle of you, Lord God, so that they may understand what it is they're supposed to do in this season. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We know that there is nothing that is too hard for you. We pray, Father, that this message intensifies, Lord God, in the hearts and minds of your people. So they'll be reminded that there is none like you and there's no need to go outside for the answers when the answers are in the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, 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 guys. I'm so excited to get right into this thing today. Uh, God is an awesome God. He's been doing some awesome things this week in our life personally. And I'm just so excited, Lord. I'm just overjoyed. Listen, we're in a position as Christians. We have to make sure that we remember who we are. Never forget who you are. You are a child of God. You're a child of God. So as a child of God, just like your children have access to thing in your, things in your house, <laughs> probably a little bit more than they should, they've got access. So in the same manner as Daddy God is our father, we've got access, right? So today, look, guys, we're going to continue on our journey in prosperity with a purpose. Uh, we're coming close to an end, but you don't want to miss this part. You want to make sure that you grasp this, because if you don't get this part, all this other stuff we've been talking about for the past weeks and past months, uh, you end up falling flat on your face if you don't get this part that we're talking about today, guys. Go to Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, and then I'm reading from the New International Version, and I'm going to start in verse 17. We're going to talk about that old rich young ruler, okay? This is Jesus talking. It says, And Jesus started on his way. A man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. He said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit life? eternal life. And then Jesus replied, he says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. The young man says, teacher, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked up at him. He said, he said, listen, one thing you lack Go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Family, the title of this message today is Can You Give It All? Let me say it again. Can you give it all? Can you give it all? Listen, God, God was showing us something in this text. He was showing us something in this moment. See, this young, this young man was in a position where he had obeyed the commandments. He was a follower of Christ. He was doing the things that he was supposed to do. He was uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and making sure that he was, you know, giving off the appearance as though everything was right. And see, the beautiful thing is it was working because it sh shows in a text that that he had stuff. Right. He wasn't poor. He was he was well taken care of. Why? Because it was so difficult for him to sell it all, right? If I got $2 in my pocket, then it's not gonna be an issue for me to get rid of that because I don't have much. But this rich young ruler had a lot, right? And so because he was obedient to the principles in the Bible, because he was ob obedient to the law, he was able to financially prosper. He was able to, on the outward appearance, have more than enough. But family, what took place is Jesus saw his heart, right? Had the possessions, had the things. He was 
having the appearance of a blessed lifestyle. But in actuality, his heart wasn't in the right place. Why? Because I said in times past, have the things, but don't let the things have you. So he was in a position where the things had him. And oftentimes we look from the outside and say, man, that couldn't be me. Uh, couldn't be me. But I'm telling you right now, if you do not do an inventory, and I'm not talking about an inventory every now and then, a regular inventory of your life. And walk through that 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 hypothetical situation where Jesus may say, listen, I want you to take everything that you have and give it away. I want you to take everything that you have, give it away. And I want you to be a missionary. What would you do? I'll wait. What would you do if you had the unction in your spirit right now, your spiritual father, mother or le leader, whoever it is that, that speaks into your life and you listen to, they confirm what you say as far as, you know, uh, God gave you the unction to go ahead and sell everything and move to a different place where you have never been before and just become a missionary and live amongst the people and teach Jesus, preach Jesus. What would you do? Listen, guys, listen, listen. I, I, I do this often. I do this often because outside of here, I've got a nine to five. Right. And so in that nine to five, I make more money than I do in ministry. So it's easy for me to say, you know what? <sighs> if I had to put ministry to the side, I still make it right. I would still live. I wouldn't be on the street. But if I look at my nine to five, which gives me more money and pays uh, pays the bills, it may be a little bit different. Right. But what we are looking at here, this is a man that's coming to Jesus. I want you guys to see this picture. He asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So what he was what he was engaging Jesus about, he wanted to find out how do I live the Zoe life where I'm, I'm totally good and I have all I, uh, everything that I need. I'm living at the highest level. And so what, what Jesus is exposing right here is that there is a way to live the highest level where you don't have concerns and you don't have that 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 uh, yearning inside. Like I'm not doing enough. Or I'm not I'm not doing this. I should I, I should be here, but I'm not there. So so that's not there. There is a way you can get to a place in life where you are fulfilled in Jesus. Stay with me, family. There is a place you can get to where you're fulfilled. And let me tell you something. I've been in both places and it's so much more peace. It's so much sweeter, family, to be in a place where you know you're doing what God has called you to do. You know you're in your right place. See, it's nothing more beautiful to me than to see somebody that's doing what they've been called to. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they're a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant. I don't care if they're playing a sport, whatever it may be. When somebody's at the top of their game and you can really see it in their eyes that they're, they're doing what they've been called to do. See, that's what this young man was looking for. He was looking for something because something was missing. So why would he come to Jesus if he had it all together? He didn't have it all together. He had the appearance of having everything together, but he didn't have it all. And so when Jesus walks down and, and of course, Jesus is the master storyteller. So after this young man drops his little head and walks off because he's not he's not going to give all this stuff away. He's not just going to follow Jesus. He's going to look like he's following Jesus, but he's not going to follow Jesus. Why? Because it cost him too much. He's going to have to lose and he's going to have to forsake some of his toys and some of his things. And, and he's going to have to miss out on, on the friends telling him, oh, man, you got this. and You got that. He's going to have to miss out on some of the popularity. Why? Because he won't have those possessions. And so for this young man in that moment, it wasn't worth it to him. He kind of wanted that Zoe life, but not really. He was kind of but not really. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So so we have to make sure that in this thing, we're looking at this young man and we have to make sure that this is not us. And so what Jesus does, he goes on and he expounds on this situation. He expounds on what just took place. We're going to we're going to uh, scoot down a little bit. Let's go to Mark 10, verse 23. I'm reading for the New King James uh, on this one. Verse 23 says, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute now. See, this is this can be easily confusing. Why? Because in verse 26, they said, wait a minute now. 
He said they were greatly astonished, saying among, among themselves, then who can be saved? Who can have the life that we're supposed to be living? Who can live the Zoe or, or, or the high life? Verse 27, but Jesus looked at them and said, with men is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Verse 28, then Peter began to say to him, Jesus, see, we have left all and followed you because, see, they were confused. Why would they be confused about this parable or the thing that Jesus is saying that, you know, it's harder for a camel. Uh, it's hard. It's easy for a camel to go through um, a needle to go through his eye. Why is he saying that? Why? Because obviously they had something. I'm not saying they were multimillionaires, but they had something. And so it was confusing or perplexing to them because they're saying, OK, well, well, then. Why? I mean, is it OK for me to have wealth? Because one, in one instant, God is telling us it's OK to have possessions, but it's almost like he's going against himself when he's telling us that it's, that it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. So now Jesus goes on. And he explains even further. Let's look, look down at verse 29. He says, so Jesus answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who should not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first we're going to we're going to put a pin in verse 31 cuz i know y'all love to quote that scripture the people that don't have much in life they always say the First going to be last and last going to be first. And they just forget about all the other stuff that just came before that. So we'll get to that later. But what I want you guys to see is this. Jesus is describing that high life because he just listed everybody that leaves all these possessions and all these things and focuses on uh, Jesus, righteous and, and, uh, and living the right way. They're going to have a hundredfold in this season and then eternal life. So he's not talking about just going to heaven. He's talking about when people forsake possessions and forsake things and, and, and the comforts of life for the gospel's sake, then he's communicating to us that we're going to be able to have all those things and more with persecutions, but and more and eternal life. So God has given us an awesome opportunity. An awesome opportunity. I want you guys to see yourself in that same position. And I'm going to ask this again and again throughout this message. Are you willing to give it all away? Are you willing to give away your popularity? Are you willing to give away your status in your community or in your neighborhood or wherever it may be for Jesus? And see, this is the thing. That's what God is looking for. He's not just looking for some of you. He's just not looking for uh, 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 just 5 percent or 10 percent of your income. He's looking for all of you. So so if you can't truly say to yourself that you could drop everything that you have. And give it all away on the command of the unction of the Holy Spirit. Then you got to You got to get you got to get before God. You got to get on your face. You need to fast. You need to get yourself in a position where you can give it all away. And I'm not just talking, listen, in circles, guys, I'm talking about something that is real and that could actually happen. See, we've been talking about prosperity. We've been talking about the way we get to a point where we have greater financial uh, influence and, 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 and different positions in life, all because of a lifestyle that we have obedience and holiness and, and living the right way. We've been talking about all that. But what happens when you get to that place? Right. See, we see clearly in here. If you're not cautious, if you're not, if your why is not in the right place, then you're going to be of no use once you get to the point when you have all these possessions because you have not kept in the back of your mind the understanding that I'm doing all this for God. You have not kept in the back of your mind the understanding that everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm increasing in, it is all for the Father. It is all for, for God's use. If you have not consistently taking an inventory and put yourself prostrate before the Lord, reminding him that Lord God, everything that I have is for you. Then it is easy for you to slip into a position where God may require something from you and you will have a reluctancy to not give it all. You will have a reluctancy not to, 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 to do everything that he's asking you to do. Why? 
because you've put yourself, you put your desires, you put the things in your dreams and aspirations above here. See, listen, God says, delight yourself in him. Delight yourself in him and then he will give you the desires of your heart, not just some random desires. But when you delight yourself in the Lord, then everything that gets his gospel out, everything that gets his word out in his name, great. All those things, those become your desires. And once those things become your desires, then he's going to fulfill the thing that he's been placing in you. Why? Because you've turned it all over to him. Listen, guys, this is not some some, you know, five step program to, to get money and and pay your house off and pay your car off. This thing is way bigger than that. See, God has no there's no limitation in God. And so what happens is the only limitation that God normally has is there's a there's a limit with us. And let me explain something to you. There is a place if your heart is not right, where if you get this much money, yeah, you serve God. But if you get this much money, you know what? God is going to be optional. And let me tell you something. It's easy to say, no, God, no, God, it's all about you. No, God, it's easy to say that when you don't have anything. But when you got money in the bank, right, your bills are low or, or they don't exist. That's why it's so hard for rich people to come to Christ. And it's not like they don't need them. Lord knows it's not like 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 people with, with money or wealth don't need them. But it's easy to trust in those riches. But let me tell you something, having to live through some crisis and and back up. Listen, there will come a day. There will come a day when your, your bank account is not going to answer your problems. There'll come a day when when the people that, you know, or your circle of influence or your sorority or, or, or your fraternity is not going to answer your problems. There's going to come a day in your life. Where there's going to be no answer. And when that day comes, what are you going to do? See, I don't want you to develop a relationship with God when the emergency time comes. You have to, be, to, to begin to develop the intimacy with God now in the good times. So that when the trials and tribulations do come, it's just going to be like a gnat or like a fly. You're going to you're going to swat it off and you're going to keep going. Why? Because you know who you are, because you're too strong in what you're doing. And you realize the circumstance of life are not bigger than the God that you serve. And so never forget your position, as I said in the beginning, never forget whose child you are. See, the enemy is always after you doubting your identity. Even when he came to Jesus, he said, if you are truly the son of God. Right. So if he came after Jesus, we're not greater than our masters. So so he's going to come after you in the same way, trying to get you to relinquish the confidence that you have in God's love for you. And so that's why the word is so important. I don't care how old you get. Listen, in your quiet time, you got to sing the song that we learned when we were in elementary school or even younger than that. Yes, Jesus loves me. Let me say it again. Yes, Jesus loves me. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Stay with me, family. It seems real simple. But if you if you miss it and you're not consistent, the waves of life will drift you right off into places of depression, to places of lack, to places where God doesn't want you to be. So we have to make sure that our heart is in the right place every single day. This is not something that's episodic. This is not something that's Sunday morning. Every single day we have to make sure that we remind ourselves that our life is not our own and that I'm going to make a point. To show God that I'm here for him, to show God that whatever I have is accessible to him. So I don't care how nice your car is. If the Lord unctions you to pick somebody up, let the Lord unction you now. Don't pick everybody up. If the Lord unctions you to pick somebody up. You're not worried about your car getting dirty, your seats being stinky because that person may not smell good or that person may not be uh, uh, of the right uh, caste or, or the right economic place in life. Right. Because everything that you have is his. So don't ever get in a position where you say, you know what, I'm going to give all this to God, but this is my house. So I'm not really going to let anybody come to my house because this is mine. This is no, 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 no. Everything that you have belongs to God. So if you're in a position where you have things that are off limits to people, some possessions that you have that you place in a position where people can't have access to it or they can't sit in your car, or they can't come in your house. You're out of order because you have to give it all to him, because at any minute your life can be required. And what are you going to do then? What is that possession going to be to? It's going to be nothing to you. 
because you won't be here. So let me tell you something. God wants you to have the things. But let me tell you something more than that. He wants to be able to use you to have those things to be a blessing. Jesus was asking this guy to sell his possessions and give them to the poor. And I talk about the community all the time and I talk about being a blessing to people all the time on purpose. Why? Because that's what Jesus was always talking about. He was always talking about taking care of the widows. He was always talking about taking care of the poor. He said they're going to be with you always. So he was always talking about making sure that we take care of the poor and make sure to take care of those that are in prison. Those that are naked. See, God, God wants us. He's telling us through the life of Jesus and showing us that our intentions, that our focus cannot just be internal. But also for the interests of others. So let me move on. I pray you guys got that. I hope I can. I move on. All right. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't hear you, but I'm, I'm going to move on anyway. So now, listen, this is the thing that you have to renew your mind. You see, the, the scripture tells us that we have to renew our mind daily, renew our mind daily, but renew it with what? So in terms of giving, in terms of living a lifestyle where if God requires something from me, I'm going to give it right away. I have to renew my mind and become a cheerful giver. Right. Let's go to. Um, uh, very familiar scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. I'm reading from the New King James. It says, but this I say, who so, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8 tells us that, and God is able, said he is able why is he able? Because we have become cheerful givers. Now that we become cheerful givers, he is able to make all grace abound toward you. Not just some grace, but all grace abound to you that you always have all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Listen, family, like I said, we, I'm in the middle of a, a, a testimony. It's, it's knocking my socks off. God is moving. Right. He's moving. But we have to understand something. There's going to be times where sometimes we need money and sometimes we need favor. But this says all grace, all grace. So if I have delighted myself in the Lord, if I have decided to be not just a giver, but a cheerful giver. See, the rich young ruler, he may have been a giver, but he wasn't a cheerful giver because a cheerful giver understands that. Listen, this is my job. This is what I'm here to do. So I'm encouraging you guys right now. Put cheer in your heart. Why? Because this is what God wants. And you renew your mind to this daily. Listen, if I want to have more than enough for every good work, not some, but every good work, then I have to become a cheerful giver. So what does that mean? A cheerful giver is one who's not always going to be in a situation where they have a lot. Right. Stop assuming that, that cheerful givers are, are, are multimillionaires. Cheerful givers may have just enough money in the bank to keep the account open. OK. But God sees the heart and just like the, the rich young ruler, he had a heart condition. He had a heart issue. And so the cheerfulness in giving, it is a heart thing. See, it is, how, it is your perspective. It is how you see yourself in the kingdom. It's how you view yourself. See, if you view yourself as a, as a conduit for God, if you view yourself as a vessel that God can use at any point to do anything, then it's easy for you to be cheerful. Why? Because you know what? God is using you in that moment. So I don't care if it's giving somebody $15 to, to, to get lunch with. If they're struggling, they don't have it and you give it. Listen, you're you act. Listen, the scriptures even tells us when we give to the poor, God is. I mean, we're, we're, we're how can I say this? We're basically going to be taken care of by God because we're we're taking care of the poor on his behalf. Lord, help me. I, I can't think of that scripture, but we're lending. God, but basically, God is in debt to us. OK. All right. Let's go to uh, another text. Go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. Proverbs eleven twenty four, reading from the New King James. It says there is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. OK. All throughout, I'm, I'm just grabbing one or two scriptures, but the same message, the narrative of this entire 66 book says the same thing. OK, it's showing us it is better to give than to receive. It's showing us that 
he wants us to be cheerful givers. It's showing us that it is our job and our role to make sure that we take care of the needs of others. It's our role and job to make sure that we're concerned about the, our interests, but not our interests alone, but the interests of others. So that's the whole narrative. And a lot of times I get frustrated sometimes, guys, when, when, when I hear uh, ministry after ministry go through and just turn the Bible into a self-help book. That's not what this is. The Bible is not your self-help book just to get you to live your best life and just forget everybody else. That's not what Jesus is telling us. When he's walking this earth, just read. You don't even have to go even any further than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to see what type of lifestyle Jesus led. And what makes you think anything is different? If you move on to Acts, what were they doing? Just think about this. When Paul, when Paul really kind of started getting the respect of uh, Peter um, and the other, uh, the other disciples, when he started getting the respect, what did, what, what, did, what did they say to him? They said, make sure that you take care of the poor. Make sure that you take care of the widows. Why was he saying that? Why was, remember that now. They asked Paul and then Paul said, you know what, I, I've already been doing that, right? So what was taking place? The disciples that had been physically with Jesus. Paul, who was coming in and becoming the, 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 the strongest apostle at that time. What were they doing? They were doing the work of the ministry. Matthew chapter 25, they were in it, okay? And so, yes, God wants you to have more. Yes, God wants you to have possessions and, and live a great life. And even in here, you can see right now that he's saying that anybody who leaves their father and mother or, or basically their, their normal way of lifestyle or their old friends and, and leaves their possessions to follow Jesus and to make sure that they, they proclaim the word of God, you're going to have a hundredfold of that same thing in this time plus eternal life. So, so Jesus is telling us clearly again and again, our role is to serve him. All right, let's go. Let's do, um, let's do one more text here. Let's go. I'm, I'm going to take you all the way back to Genesis 26. Going from Genesis uh, 26, verse 12, New King James. What I want you guys to get is the circumstance. And this last point, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. The circumstance of life does not dictate your giving. Let me say it again. Your situation in life right now does not dictate your giving. Genesis 26, 12 it says, then Isaac sold in that land and reaped in the same year. This is a land of a famine. And the Lord blessed him. The men began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. This is Isaac sowing in the land of a famine, a time where the circumstances around him made him think that he probably should have just kind of held on to his stuff because it was a land of a famine, right? If I have a lot, then, and I know it's gonna be a famine for a while, then I might need to hold on to my stuff. But what did he do? See, he had a revelation, even in the Old Testament, even in the Old Covenant, he had a revelation that his role was to magnify his dad. His role was to magnify God. How was he doing that? He was giving even more in the times where there was a famine, in the times of there being a potential recession or, or depression, whatever it may have been. He was giving even more then. So ask yourself this. Have you considered to increase your offerings? Have you considered to increase your givings? Have you considered to, to give a car away or give some clothes away? In the time of a famine, have you considered that right now? Or have you just kind of been going on, you know, business as usual, kind of doing things, you know, the same way you've always done because you have what you need. Your car may be paid off and, and, and this may be paid off. Have, have you have you have you in, <laughs> have you inconvenienced yourself? Stay with me, guys. Let me let me walk up on y'all. Make sure y'all hear this. Have you inconvenienced yourself? for the sake of someone else. Think about this now. This is an individual thing. If you don't do something that is uncomfortable sometimes, then you're going to miss out on where God wants you to be. 
See, see, in, the, in this Western society, we have such a big thing on comfort and making sure that everything's easy. You know, if, I, if I'm hungry, I go to, to the fast food place and, you know, by the time I take my foot off the brake and, and put it on again, my food better, better be ready or it's a problem, right? Because I, I'm assuming that life should be easy. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> it's, it's not God's design for everything that you do to always be easy. Y'all understand that? That's not his design. And, 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 and you can clearly see from, from those who don't like to work out, right? I don't want to be sore. I don't want to break a sweat. I don't want to have to, uh, what they tell, uh, I don't want to have to get my hair done, right? For those who don't want to work out, for those who don't want to have any kind of pain, what happens? You end up overweight, you end up sick. Why? Because you don't want to inconvenience yourself. So what I'm saying is, I'm not picking on anybody because I can't see your face. You have to get to a point where you understand that inconvenience is a part of your sacrifice and your service to God. So, yes, you may want to do this and do that, but no, you may need to sold that money. No, you may need to take that car and you may need to give it away to somebody who needs it. Why? Because you're following after God's heart. You, you, you're being the hands and feet of Jesus by doing the things that are sometimes inconvenient for you. But listen. God is telling us through Jesus Christ that we will reap a hundredfold in this season and eternal life if we choose to leave all of those possessions, take them off a pedestal and open our hand and allow God to use what we have. And the reason I'm saying this again and again is because this is coming from God, family. This is coming from the scripture. I'm not talking about something where we kind of twisting and, and picking scriptures out and, and, and saying, OK, well, well, do this. And no, no, no. Look over the whole text. Look, look through the life of Jesus. See, we call ourselves Christians, right? Which should be followers of Christ. So if we're truly following Christ, then what are we following? Are we following the picture that we painted of him or are we following the real picture of Jesus Christ? And that real picture of Jesus Christ is, is concerned about clothing the naked, feeding the homeless, taking care of the widows, visiting those that are in prison. See, that is the real Jesus. Not the Jesus that you make up in your mind and, and, and just the, 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 the little helper that, that, that you, you know, going to get whatever you want based upon, um, you know, you telling God to do this and you forcing God to do this. Listen, God don't work that way. He doesn't work that way. The way God works is what we see in the text. All right, I, 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 think I, I think I beat it long enough. We've got to be on kingdom business, family. <coughs> I told you guys on last week, we have to be about our father's business. Have to be about our father's business. Listen, listen, in, in communal neighborhoods and communal uh, uh, parts of the world, if my daddy is a carpenter, I'm a carpenter. If my daddy, uh, um, you know, um, is a um, shoemaker, then I'm a shoemaker. If my dad, if my, whatever my dad is, that's what I am. Why? Because you had to be about the family business. So what I want to tell you guys and, and, and have you retrospectively think, am I truly about the family business? Is anybody's life? If I look back over on, on, on this past week or these past two weeks, is anybody's life better? because of something that I did. Yes, you gave your tithes, God bless you. But is anybody else's life better because of something that you've done? And secretly, oftentimes, the tithes and your offering, you're not giving them the right way. Some of that money is wasted because you're not giving it with the right heart. You're giving it because you feel morally responsible. You're giving it because that's what you've been taught and I just give my tithes. So some of that money is just going to waste, why? Because your heart is not in the right place. See, God wants a cheerful giver, even the tithes. It's not just another bill. God wants you to cheerfully give out of your treasure. Why? Because that's your father's business. And so let me jump back, jump back again so you guys can do a quick assessment. And let me just tell you, it may seem small and seem simple. But when they called and said in Memphis, Tennessee, that you cannot drink the water, what was your first thought? I'm not putting myself in any kind of puzzle. But what was your first thought? Was it, let me make sure I can get all the water I can? Or was it, let me get some water and see who needs some? 
Let me check on, on, on Auntie or let me check on Big Mama, who I know probably ain't getting out to the store and see if she needs some. I'm just telling you guys, th this is the life of a Christian. This is the life of a follower of Christ. What would Jesus do? Right? If there was a situation where there's, people are snowed in and they can't get out. So, so just because your heat is working, is that it for you? Did you just snuggle up and, and, and watch your Netflix and chill? Or did you even consider the needs of somebody else? And I, look, I, I'm not scared of y'all. Y'all not here no way, but I'm not scared of y'all. I'm just telling you the life and the mindset of a cheerful giver. This is the life that, and I'm not saying I'm always perfect. But when that water situation hit, I'm thinking, I was like, who can I get water to? Who needs water? Who needs this? Why? Because it's my job to represent my daddy. Jesus is not physically here. So I got to be him. Lord, I, I pray y'all get this. I, I pray this comes through because you guys have to understand something. <clears throat> there are people that, that you model yourself after. I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I had somebody who I kind of looked up to. M many people have somebody to look up to. Right. And when you're trying to make decisions, sometimes you may think to yourself, you know, what would such and such do? Right. What would my uncle do? What would my big brother do? What would what would they do in this situation? So I want you guys to do the same self-assessment and say, what would my daddy do? What would Jesus do when the situations come? What is the what is the filter that you use to make your decisions? What is the filter that you use to make your reactions to to anything that comes to you? And what I'm saying is. I want you guys, if you don't hear anything else from this message with prosperity, with a purpose. Is that you have to make sure. That you are constantly positioning yourself so that others can feed from you. So that others can feed. So listen, you have to see yourself as a tree and see yourself always wanting to be in a position where you always have more than enough. How do you always have more than enough? You're being obedient to the word. You're filling yourself. You're meditating on his word day and night. You're pushing forward and trying to expand your territory more so that you'll have more so that you can be able to be more to more people. So imagine yourself being that tree. And as you continue to grow in wisdom and stature, the tree is beginning to expand and more people are able to eat from the fruit that you have. And as this tree expands, people are able to understand, listen, there's something different about that person. There's something different about that tree. There's fruit there. Are you bearing fruit? And the more fruit that you bear, the more people that can eat, the more people that can survive. And there's people right now in Texas and other places right now. They're in situations that they've never been before. And you could be a light in a, in, in, in a desert, in a famine, in a depression, in a in whatever it may be. Put yourself always in a position where you're wanting to expand, not just for your sake, not just for your interests, but so that others can feed, so that others can survive all because of you being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for your way. We're trusting and depending on you. Father, do not allow this word to slip from my memory, Lord God. I pray that it falls on good ground, Lord God. I pray that they actually hear the voice of you through me, Father. Ask and pray, Lord God, that no, no household that is represented here under the sound of my voice is without. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I believe your word is true in its life. And I call forth more than enough in the household of everybody under the sound of my voice. And Father, we're going to be quick to give you the glory now and in the process and when it comes. Hallelujah in Jesus name. If you're not saved, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, please don't let this time go by. Please, please don't let this time go by. I know you're busy. I know you may think you can handle it on your own. But as I said in the beginning, God did not create us to handle stress. So why in the world would we handle it? Why in the world would we always try to do everything on our own? See, God has given us the opportunity to cast all of our cares on him. But that's for his children. How do you become a child? That's when you give your life to him. How does that happen? See, it's something being called. It's called born again. God wants to adopt you and call you his son or call you his daughter. So, number one, you have to believe that Jesus Christ came on this earth died on the cross for your sins and that he rose again. And if we believe on Jesus, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, then yes, we'll be saved. And yes, God will now call us children and we have access. So if you want to do that right now, let's let's walk through this confession. 
Father, forgive me for I have sinned. I have messed up, Lord. I believe that Jesus came on this earth and died for my sins. And by faith, I believe that he rose again. And I commit my life from this moment forward to allow Jesus to be the boss of my life. And by faith right now, I am saved. Family, if you just repeated it after me, if you just believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth, Romans 10, 9 and 10 is a scripture that that I use as my reference and as my understanding of what God needs from us in order to become adopted and engrafted into his family. Please reach out to us. There's a phone number that's going to be on the screen at the end. Please contact us. Please reach out to us and let us know. Leave a message if nobody picks up, if it's, if it's after hours. Let us know your name and your phone number, and we, we will definitely try to, to, to get you a book that Dr. Holloway has written so that you begin the process of maturing and becoming a grown person in the things of God. Because see, there, there's maturity, just like with anything. Once you start into something, you have to learn the process. So I encourage you guys right now, go through and look at all the old uh, tapes. Uh, I'm saying tapes, no tapes. Go and look through all the old videos. Swipe left, swipe right, do whatever you need to do. But you need to get all this word in you. And you need to reach out and make sure that you connect with somebody. We have connect groups every Sunday at 1015. So go to the website, bolcc.org. So it'll be on the screen. And go to the connect group so that you connect with somebody and see somebody face to face on the Zoom meetings that we have every week. So I love you guys. And I pray that you are continuing to grow. Um, I cannot end the service. I cannot stop without giving you guys the opportunity to give. It's up to you guys. I, I, I've talked about giving. I've talked about you giving of yourself and giving of everything you have. So this shouldn't be a long thing. Listen, I'm just going to give you the opportunity. It's up to you. I told you God loves a cheerful giver. It's up to you. I'm not going to pull I'm not going to, you know, do, turn a cartwheel. I don't know if I can do a cartwheel anymore. I could probably do it if I really try, but I'm not doing any of that. Why? Because it's your decision. I've given you the word. I've given you the instruction. I've given you why. And so uh, the next thing is to give you the how. So if you want to give via text, it's going to be on the screen. If you want to go online and give, bolcc.org, you can give. If you want to come to the church, 3795 uh, Fraser Raleigh Road, if you're in the Memphis area on Wednesday between 10 a.m. and 12, and on Fridays between 12 noon and 2. So it's up to you. All I'm going to do now is pray over your offering and pray that you continue to increase and pray that you guys become the trees that are always expanding, always bearing more fruit. Why? Because God loves, he enjoys the prosperity of his servants and even more his children. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the seeds that are sown now and those that are going to be sown in the future. I pray for awesome increase. I pray for your, your children, Lord God, to have more than enough for every good work. I cannot say it enough. I'm believing by faith. I'm connecting my faith with theirs and I'm believing that they're going to have more, Lord God, unexpected income. Things are not even expecting, Lord God, is going to come, Father, and we're believing that it's going to be continuous and always keep us mindful of our responsibility to be givers, Father. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you, Father. And I call forth more than enough in the lives of everyone in the sound of my voice. Those that are becoming and are cheerful givers in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys, we love you. We love you. We're going to have a guest speaker coming in next week. Stay tuned, stay locked in and stay connected. God bless. Good morning, Breath of Life, and welcome to Bell News. Two options are available to request contribution statements. For the electronic option, visit our website, bolcc.org, click the Contribution tab, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and complete the requested information. Click Submit when done. For the postal or pickup option, contact the accounting department at 901-383-5555 and provide the requested information. BOLCC is hiring. We are looking for lead teachers full-time, 
campus aides full-time and part-time in our preschool department. Please send your resumes to personnel at bolcc.org. Sparkling Seniors, the local chapter of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History is inviting you to join them via Zoom February 28th at 3 p.m. as they present the Black Family, Representation, Identity, and Diversity as part of Black History Month. You may contact Ms. Dolores Briggs at 901-491-6230 if you have any questions. You can register in advance for this meeting by using the link on the screen. Hello, Breath of Life family, partners in holiness and friends. I am Addie Holloway, and I have a few questions for you. Do you want to see our cities, our states, and our nation healed? Do you want healing manifested in your body, your family member's body, and your sisters and brothers in Christ? Do you want to see marriages restored and family relationships healed? Or do you want to see people saved and delivered and set free? Well, most of all, do you want to give the Lord delight and pleasure? He says that he delights in our prayers in Proverbs 15 and 8. Well, all of this can happen and more as we join together in continuous corporate prayer. We will begin our 24-hour, four-week prayer chain in accordance with James 5 and 16. And we're going to begin this on February the 21st and will run through March the 20th. You can be a link in that chain by selecting the times that you will commit to prayer. Our prayer times will be in 30-minute increments, and you can choose as many 30-minute increments as you like, and you can pray wherever you like. We will also be fasting on Wednesdays until noon to help break yokes. We are still adhering to the county's Safer at Home health order, so this will be personal prayer time in your prayer closet. Now, I would like for you to call the church. Let's get involved, everybody. Call the church at 901-373-7219 and give your name and the times that you will be praying. Also, you can send information, email at reset at bolcc.org. The Lord says that we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He will forgive our sin and heal our land. He promised to supply all of our needs. The Lord is our shepherd, and we don't have to want. He told us to pray without ceasing. He said to pray always and don't faint, so more prayer going to keep you from fainting and giving up. And then he says he delights in our prayer. Don't you want to give him delight? In Proverbs 15 and 8, he delights in our prayers. So family, friends, and partners, let's take God at his word. Let's join together. And pray, pray, pray. Call the church now. Give us your times, as many as you want. And uh, we're going to join together and see things happen as we pray. God bless you and we love you.